Welcome to video 4 in the ClickSense Beginners Workshop series. In this video we are going to continue building out our visualizations in the various sheets of our Click application. Now this is where we had finished up in the previous video. We had just created our ClickSense Master Library. Now note that this is not compulsory. You can just launch straight into creating visualizations from the fields, but using the Master Library gives you a central point of control for all of those business calculations and uh, fields and such. And for ClickSense Enterprise, it gives you the foundations for enabling self-service because your users can just drag and drop predefined business logic from the master library. And this ensures that everyone is on the same page in terms of the calculations and logic they're using in a customized or personalized ClickSense application. To use these within our application, it is just a, magic, a matter of dragging these across over here onto our sheet and notice that our total sales is colored in the color that I assigned to it so you can have repetition of color to sort of imply certain concepts throughout your application as I drag across my total cost there I think I've just used the default there of blue and let's just space these evenly I'll drag across my total margin KPI here and note as I drag across my margin percentage that because Click has detected this is a ratio, a percentage type field, probably the most likely way I might want to visualize that is as a KPI object. Now that isn't actually what I wanted to use here, but you can see how once Click understands the data, it can start to provide uh, chart suggestions for you. And that's a feature that you can turn on or off using the toggle up here. I actually want to see a KPI here rather than the gauge. So what I can do is click on this little item here and we see additional chart suggestions. So it's suggested primarily that we might want to use a gauge, uh, but actually I want to use a KPI object. So I'm going to come down here and select an alternative suggestion here, like so. This has shown my margin as 0.2, so the only thing I need to do now is go into my measure here and say it's a number, and choose a particular numeric format, in this case a percentage to one decimal place, like so. Now note, if I turned that off, I get the full set of options to configure for this particular chart object. So that's the same across any of the charts in our application there. The charts suggestions feature is a way of sort of simplifying things for the novice user. Once you want to go in and uh, leverage all of those capabilities there, you can just turn the chart suggestions off. Another way to do that, if I perhaps just delete that item there, is if I go straight to my charts list here and drag a KPI object across, I'm ensured of getting a KPI here and it then just says, okay, you need a measure and I can select from my list of measures. Note when I do it that way that the master library items always appear first in my list there. So it really does assist the user in building out their visualizations when you have defined those master items. It was back in video one when we actually took a look at the application that we're building. So I thought I'd give you a quick refresher here. So you can see we have our KPI objects across the top. What I've actually added in the app I'm building is slightly different, but I'm sure you understand how that works there. We've got our bar chart and our map and a scatter plot and a line chart down the bottom there. So let's take a look at our application we're building. We see here in the application we're actually building here, there's a couple of tweaks I need to make. I haven't colored my bubbles uh, in by my total sales dollar value here. And we haven't added in the icons there as a bit of a decoration or uh, informative element. And we also had a slightly different format for our numbers there. So let's show how we can make those changes here. To change the display of the numbers, I'm just going to turn off chart suggestions here so I get my full set of options, go to my data. And currently the auto formatting is quite a handy feature because it will auto, it will auto round your numbers as the user is making selections through the application. So if I change this to actually show the full number, I can then change how that number is actually displayed. So maybe I want to go to a dollar value, so money display, which is going to show my cents in the format like so. I can actually change the format pattern just by removing the cents from each of the format options there. And that will give me this layout like so. The first one is the positive display and the next one is the negative display. It's going to show a negative in front. If perhaps I wanted to show brackets instead, then I could change my format layout like so. Now let's actually uh, turn off the chart suggestions for our map here so we can get in and I'll show you how we can change the, um, uh, the display of the color and the um, expression here. So looking at our map layer, we have a point layer here and it's showing the size of our bubbles based by a manual calculation that I did earlier. 
If I drag across my master library calculation, I can say, yes, use it in the point layer. You can have multiple layers in your click maps, points, uh, shapes, and also heat maps. Now I wanted to change the sizing by the total sales there to use our um, master library measure. So no change there because it's the same calculation, but now I'm leveraging the master library. And if I drag that across again, I can say using our point layer again, and now color by our total sales. And I might then just place the um, the legend on the right hand side, like I think it was in our, um, our other map. Now I'm going to come back at the end to show you how we can add in some of those icons across the top a little bit later on. Let's at this point make some space for our additional charts at the bottom here. So we'll just move these guys up. So let's grab our scatter plot firstly and drag it down like so. As I drag any particular chart object onto the sheet here, it tells me the minimum number of attributes I need to add in order to configure this. So for a scatter plot, I need at least one dimension and two measures. That will give me my left and right, or sorry, my X and Y axes, and my uh, plots or my dots. For this, I want to use the product, so I can easily select that from there. For my measure, I would like to see the margin percentage and the total sales value. So instantly I have my chart displaying like so. However, I would like to see perhaps my margin on the left axis here, on the Y axis. And that is just a matter of grabbing my margin and swapping it around with my total sales there. So now the chart displays like so. And I can call this the um, sales versus margin chart like so. Finally, I might like to size my bubbles here or even color my bubbles by a couple of different measures. So each additional measure that I add in there will add to those um, display attributes. Or in fact, maybe I want to add see a size of the bubble showing the volume of, um, of sales that we've had of any uh, particular item. So you notice for our size here, I can add in another calculation. I can leverage my master library or any of my fields here. Um, let's actually add one in that is manually calculated because you can actually combine manual calculations here with those used from the master library. So let's just say sum of quantity there. And I'm going to call this the quantity sold. And you'll just notice there that slightly that has changed the size of my bubbles, which you can see if we maximize our chart like so, there's some slightly different sizes there. So that's how we can very quickly and easily do our scatter plot. Going back into our chart here, what we can do now is add our final chart on our dashboard here, which was the line chart. So if I drag across our line chart, for a line chart you need as a minimum a dimension and a measure. So let's select for our dimension the uh, month, order month, where are we there? I wanted to see initially the total dollar value of sales here. and that's handy, but it's actually aggregating across all of the years there. So that's a good indication of how um, the seasonality is across the months in general across all years. But what I'd actually like to see is another dimension shown there to split out our line by the order years. So it's just a matter of going to our master items and grabbing our order year and adding that as an extra attribute. And now we see the align per order year. If I go down to some of the properties of the chart here, I might want to display um, the data points here just to make it a little bit easier to hover over each data point. I can turn on or off labels, for instance, and click will intelligently just slot in the labels that are able to easily fit based on the responsive design. So the more space I've got, the more uh, labels I will see on the chart. And I can give this a title and say sales trend. So you can see how quickly and easily we can build out our dashboard once those master library items are defined. It's just a matter of dragging and dropping items onto our sheet. Note that I don't need to do anything to wire all of these charts together. Everything is powered by the Click Associative Engine. So as I select Australia in the bar chart, all of the, the visualizations update immediately. And I can also lasso the last part of the year here or a particular selection of our products from the scatter plot, like so. So that brings us to the end of this video. In the next video, we'll add some additional sheets to our ClickSense application and continue to flesh out our visualizations. Thank you very much for watching.